Reflections from Torch Trust, focusing on Christian faith and sight loss. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Gunpowder, treason and plot. Hello and welcome to this week's Guy Fawkes Day episode of Reflections. This is the show from Torch Trust that focuses on faith and disability and I'm your host Marilyn Baker. Now we're keeping our firework theme going with a fascinating bonfire night thought for the week from our friend Alan Vogt who is a very long time supporter of Torch. Our reader today is James Brookman. Remember, remember, the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. When we hear children reciting this at this time of year, we are reminded that we are actually celebrating deliverance from a terrible murder of King James I and all those in Westminster at the opening of Parliament by the discovery of Guy Fawkes and 36 barrels of gunpowder in the cellar below. I have a personal link with November the 5th, as it's my birthday. Friends and family used to give me boxes of fireworks, but I was never quite sure how I felt about seeing my birthday presents go up in smoke. Many look on this day with apprehension. The bangs make our pets nervous, and if you are blind or partially sighted, it must be frustrating not to be able to see the beautiful displays. For some, the loud noises often bring back bad memories of wartime. I like to think of fireworks as a kind of parable, where different personalities are represented. First, there is the banger or squib, which just makes a frightening noise. Some people are like this. Plenty of talk, but short on action. Bulls in a china shop. They may be fond of their own voices and unwilling to listen to other people's opinions. Then there's the Catherine wheel, going round and round, going nowhere. These people remind me of the Bible character of Martha, who got hot and bothered cooking a meal for Jesus. She became irritable and critical when Jesus allowed her sister Mary just to sit at his feet. Beware of the barrenness of a busy life. Next is the Roman candle, which shines for a brief while and then goes out. Many say they want to live the Christian life, but they get distracted. The Bible encourages us to persevere and not give up. Finally, there is the rocket, always the centrepiece of the display. The rocket ascends to the heavens and bursts into wonderful colours. I like to think of this as being like the believer who has a close relationship with God and shines as a light in this dark world. As Jesus said, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, it may feel a little early to be thinking about Christmas, but the start of Advent will be here in just over a month, so it seems like a great time to get planning our Advent reading. And if you're wondering what Advent reading is, many Christians take the time at Advent to do a daily or weekly themed series of readings to help them prepare in joyful anticipation of Christmas. If you'd like to do some Advent reading this year, but you don't know where to start, never fear, because the Reflections team have got you covered. Here is producer Grace talking with Becky Davies about the wonderful Advent resources available from Torch. Becky, thank you so much for joining us to talk about books today. Um, I'm really excited to hear what Advent resources you've got in store for us. So um, why don't we just launch in? What's the first book on your list this Advent? OK, so the first one is brand new for this year and it's called Christmas Voices by Claire Musters. Um, it's available in all media to buy from Torch for $9.99 and it's also in our library. Um, and it's basically 25 short reflective pieces 
um, about the Christmas season, which uh, Claire has written. So she's uh, she goes, starts with promises and preparation and then uh, leads through to joy, peace and finally love. Um, and I really, really like this because um, not only do we get Claire's reflection each day, but she's also um, had uh, written to lots of authors, Christian authors, and asked them to um, share their favourite Christmas carol or poem or hymn or prayer um, and, and say a little bit about why it's their favourite. Um, so each day... Uh, you have a little reflection, a Bible reading and a reflection from Claire. But then you also have a carol or hymn um, and some famous Christian authors writing a little bit about why it's particularly special to them and what it means to them. Um, so it's a, it's just a, yeah, a lovely little package of different things each day. So I really like that idea that you can kind of also dip in and out of it. So although there's a there's a theme running through the whole book, um, each day stands alone as well. So it's a great book to start with if you've if you've never sort of had a go at reading something in the run up to Christmas, um, because you can dip in it in and out of it and, and it won't matter if you miss some days. Um, so, yeah, I really like the format of this. And um, I think it's going to be yeah, a really good book for this year. Yeah. Oh, that sounds brilliant. I love the idea of that. It sounds ever so Christmassy with the different carols and things. That sounds great. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so that one's going on my list already. Um, what's the next book that you want to talk to us about today? Okay, so the next one is called Love Came Down at Christmas and it's daily readings for Advent and it's by S.B. Ferguson. Um, this is available to buy in Braille and large print um, at six ninety nine, and it's also available from the Torch Library. Um, so this is 24 daily readings and he uses um, that famous passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So if you've ever been to a church wedding, you may well have heard these verses being read because they're really, really well known and they talk about love. Um, so I'll just read a little bit um, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 because I'm sure it's the kind of verses that you would have heard before. But it says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. And it goes on. But it's just a lovely passage all about love. Um, and it's not one that we usually think about at Christmas. So uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of unusual to to use those um, that passage from 1 Corinthians in, in some Christmas readings. Um but actually, it does really fit really well, um, because obviously the passage is all about love and um, he links it in with how Jesus, obviously we remember Jesus coming at Christmas and Jesus is the ultimate example of love. So actually those um, verses from 1 Corinthians show us what love is like, but they also then point to how Jesus shows that love. So he looks at different segments of each day. Um, so if you really want to get stuck into something and you really feel you're going to have a go at doing it every single day, then I think this is a great one to have a go at and use this year. Oh, I really like the sound of that. I like it when something is set into these nice defined bits and I know I can do a bit every day and it just, I think it makes you kind of do it, which is helpful for me. So Yes, no, absolutely. It does. Yeah. Yeah.
And that was my song, Forever You're the Same. Let's go back to Becky and Grace for the rest of their book talk now. So the next books you're going to tell us about, I know, were written by someone you've actually met recently. So um... yes, I have. So um, so this is Michael Mitten. Um, so he recently came to Torch House to um, lead um, our retreat. Um, and it was really lovely. He's a, such a lovely man, really kind of gentle um, teacher. I describe him as a teacher and he's really full of wisdom. So, you know, as as listening to him, I, I gained so much from it. I was able to sit in on some of his sessions and uh, really love listening to him. Um, so he's also written a Christmas um, Advent book um, and it's called A Handful of Light. So it's available to buy in all media uh, for $7.99 and it's also available from our library. Um, and this uh, looks at how, you know, Advent and Christmas is in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. It's the dark winter months. The days are short. The temperatures are really low. You know, sometimes it feels like there's not even a prospect of spring ahead. But he kind of takes the theme of hope and interweaves it with um, light and darkness um, that we find all throughout the Bible. And he's written these daily readings for, for this kind of season when it's all quite dark. And uh, yeah, he give, gives you some thoughts for each day and, and sort of chance to reflect each day. So um, knowing how I've heard him speak and how, yeah, he's such an engaging speaker, I'm sure his, his uh, writing is very similar. He's also given us something that runs from the 1st of December to the 6th of January. So when you get to Christmas Day, often it feels like, oh, that's it we've done Christmas but actually he takes you on into that period when it's that you know waiting around not sure what's going on time of year um and he, he you know you've got something to carry on with after Christmas which I, I really like that idea as well yeah oh that's brilliant I love that it carries on that's really interesting that's yeah. great that's good value as well <laughs> It is. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we've we've got some more of Michael's books available, haven't we, um, in, at Torch? Uh, do you want to tell us a bit more about a couple of those? Yeah, so yeah, two two more books available from Michael. So um, the first one is Seasoned by Seasons, and it's um, f it's called Flourishing in Life's Experiences. So um, this is available in all media, and it's priced at seven ninety nine. And um, in this, Michael kind of looks at how the seasons themselves can kind of be a bit like our own lives. They can be very variable um, and change in a moment. Um, so in this book, he kind of acknowledges that and offers biblical reflections for how our life can have seasons. So his sort of spring idea is about is a season of emerging new life. And then summer is about the season of fruitfulness autumn is the season of letting go and then winter is the season of discovering light in the darkness um so it kind of encourages us to think about you know what do we learn from the seasons and how can this you know be encouraged in and, and help us in the seasons of our own lives and michael is a really great storyteller so there's gr some great retelling of bible stories um they're really engaging and they really help to draw us into the story um, so each story, he brings a message that relates to our own lives. And the book encourages you to reflect on, on each section and also gives you a prayer for each each section as well. Um, so it's a book to read slowly and really kind of spend time with. So that's the first one. Um, and the other book by uh, Michael uh, that I want to highlight is called The Oceans and the Human Heart. Um, and it's, this is a fiction book. So, um, as I said, it, Michael is a really good storyteller. So this is a, a fiction book that he's written and it's um, based in a sleepy village, which is dramatically disturbed when the elderly village priest disappears one evening and the uh, blood is found on the church floor, but there's no sign of the priest. So it's kind of a bit of a mystery book as to what has happened. Um, I won't say any more than that in case you want to read it, but I just thought I'd read a couple of reviews that I found um, on um, Amazon, um, which are about this book. And I just thought it was sort of really made me think, wow, it sounds amazing. Um, so this is uh, one of the reviews. Uh, the writer says, yet another wonderful novel from Michael Mitten. 
As always, his characterization is superb. You really feel you know each person, their personalities build up throughout the story, as do the, does the reader's compassion for them. It is a difficult book to put down. Once you start to read it, you are eager to know what is going to happen next. I would recommend this book to everyone. And the second one is, I have no hesitation in highly recommending this book. Michael is one of my favorite authors. His stories are full of imagination and this latest book is no exception. I loved all of the characters, the story, the creativity. It's a great story of unexpected hope and again, a real page turner. So he has some really rave reviews on his Amazon page for this book. And I just thought, wow, it, yeah, he's, uh, he's obviously got a good fan base out there who really love his work. Um, so, yeah, so definitely worth exploring. Yeah, that sounds so intriguing. I'm such a fan of mystery novels, so I'm, I'm going to have to read that because I need to know what happens now. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us today, Becky. It's been wonderful to talk books with you and uh, it's been great to have you on the show. Well, thank you so much. It's uh, great to share. Well, I'm sorry to say that we're all out of time for today. I hope you've enjoyed your time with us today and if you're registered blind or partially sighted and you'd like to get hold of any of the books discussed in today's show, just get in touch with Torch. The number to call is 01858 438 260. That's 01858 438260 or you can email info at torchtrust.org. Our accessible lending library and bookshop are both full of wonderful Christian literature and resources. So if none of today's books seem quite the right fit for you, why not have a chat with our lovely client services team who'll be happy to help. And if you'd like more information on books from Torch, sign up for What's New our quarterly magazine. Again, the number to call is 01858 438 260 or email info at torchtrust.org. We'll be back next week with our Remembrance Sunday episode, so don't forget to tune in. Until then, from me, Marilyn, and everyone on the Reflections team, goodbye and God bless. You've been listening to Reflections from Torch Trust. Yeah.